I was surprised. The, I was the very size, surprised yeah. how far left that was. Yeah. And I play this game every day of my life. All right, Danny. So one thing that I tend to struggle with when I'm playing, and a lot of amateurs do as well, is left to right putts. Correct. Uh, for a right-hander, that is. Yep. So when the, when the putt is kind of falling away, and I think one of the challenges is just allowing enough break and hitting it across yourself almost. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it is the opposite direction, I feel like it's easy to stand there and kind of like push it up the hill yep. a little bit and kind of get that sort of hand-eye coordination reactive in the moment putt yep. rather than when it's a little bit left to right, kind of trusting it. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to that? I would agree with that. And I think one big thing that um, people probably don't think too much of is actually where the weight falls. Yeah. So if your weight's falling into your toes, you probably feel slightly less balanced than you would maybe in the heels. So yeah, again, people feel using uphill because they're almost sat back a little bit. It's like, yeah, I can just push it up the hill. Yeah. Whereas the left to right, you are almost falling to me mm. to a certain degree or the weight's falling this way. So then again, it feels like if you're falling forward, do I have to then try and pull it up the hill? Do I still not allow enough break? Yeah. That one tends to be what everyone would say they feel less comfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I, what I'll do is I'll kind of run you through my process for this. Yep. Now, um, I'm not a aim point certified instructor. I do know how it works. Yep, yep. My general rule of um, green reading is I find the high point, the low point, um, I find the straight il uphill putt and then I, I have a reference right, from there. Yeah. So for example, looking here, if I was to imagine pouring a uh, bottle of water down on the ground, I can see it's all gonna slope away from me. Yep. So what I would then do is I would come on the underside, I would look for what would be considered the straight uphill putt. So yep. let's say of six foot, I go, okay, if I hit it from here, this is relatively straight uphill. I then go, well, if it's straight uphill here, keeping all things simple, yep. it's gonna be straight downhill. How far away is that putt from the straight putt? Yeah. Then I would go, well, it's not at a 90 degree angle, it's over here. So that means for me, collecting that information, I might say that my intention here with this putt, my start, my aim point, I should say, is probably around about here somewhere. Okay. Okay. So, let's have a look how I go there. And that one there, believe it or not, right, I had the intention, I was over the ball, second guess myself. Yep. And then I almost felt like I blocked it down the hill. So again, that <laughs> it's when people say to step away from something if, if uh, they don't feel too comfortable. So you said there your aim point would have been around, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, approximately there. Around there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to now set up one thing, I would say a lot of people, if, if they have some form of lazy you can buy spirit levels with lasers actually to check where they are aiming relative to yeah. the spot you have picked now even back at the academy finding straight is probably the most easiest i think people can understand some people do struggle with aim point it's a great method yeah but it depends on the individual if they can obviously learn that as sure. as good as some so finding straight i would always recommend mm -hmm. i think it's also getting them to be creative as well and 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 starting to read the greens a little bit more efficient yeah. rather than standing there hitting it not knowing the break yeah not knowing the speed they're going to apply so it's it's going to be too uncontrollable with that but if you were to now set up to that ball okay we're, we're referencing that as your aim point so mm -hmm. all we're going to use is a, a laser we're just going to check where you are aiming relative to that ball you've hit so okay. do you feel comfortable i think so i'm feeling pretty vulnerable okay so from there we can see I'm actually aiming a mile left. So we're saying the aim there was actually. Yeah, approximately there. there. Okay. Which is crazy to actually then check the reference point of which, yeah. whether it's high or low. It's very rare that I would say everyone is perfectly at their aim point. But again, yeah. it's, it's trying, to, trying to know what your tendencies are mm. and manage them that way. Yeah, so, so my intention was to aim at um, outside left by pro approximately that first ball. Yep. And then when I'm standing over, I don't know if it was a reaction to the, the first part, but now right. aiming a little bit further left. Yep. 
But even then, I was surprised. The, I was very size, surprised yeah. how far left that was. Yeah. And I play this game every day of my life, right? Yeah. And so that just shows the importance of getting some feedback, right? Correct. Just That's all it is. So mm. it's just a check of where you're aiming because... In terms of aiming, again, we talk analogies. I always use a bow and arrow yeah. as a target. So if you're, or archery, if you're aiming at the board, and let's say you are aiming two foot off the board, mm. the moment you let go of that arrow, you, there's got to be some manipulation. So again, what's a face we're going to use as a reference point. Yeah. So statistically, for you to hit bullseye, which everyone would want to do, is actually hard. Yeah. If you can aim at the board itself yeah. and just let go yeah i'm not saying you're going to hit ball every time mm. but statistically you will have more of a chance of hitting that yeah okay. so again the aiming because again we know the ball's not going to draw or fade in obviously the break is the break so the importance of checking aim mm. is massive and what people could do just to get used to it before they even did it on a breaking put would be find a straight put yeah make sure it is straight yeah get a straight edge sharpie on the floor so then they can strip back the drill, mm -hmm. put the ball just in front of the line, square the face up to the line, mm. and just start seeing where the aiming would be. Some people may find their face is slightly open to the line, yeah. slightly close to the line, Interesting. and then it gives them a bit more of a feel. Yeah, I think um, historically with my putting, uh, I've always kind of left the face quite open mm -hmm. at impact. and Which if we was to use that, you would have to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm almost compounding that. <laughs> compounding that, <area. laughs> All right, so let's say now, it's obvious that I'm aiming a lot further left than where I think I'm aiming. In this situation for me, giving me a lesson, what should I do? So again, I would say, would you feel you are quite a, a sort of, again, using imagery as a, as a reference point? Yeah, big time. Big so if we was to say, we'll set you up to a specific target mm -hmm. and then put in an object there, whether it's a ghost hole, whether it's a tee peg, yeah. of trying to feel the face go around, what you would find is you would probably have to feel the face, in theory, close yeah. more yeah. to almost keep it left of the intermediate target rather than the end yeah. point itself. Okay. So if you was to now set up to this ball. Which one? We want to go to the inside ball? Yep. I'll try again. See, so straight away, that looks better. So if I was to now use, let's say, just as a ball, as a, as a reference point, mm -hmm. and we used to say... Something around that. So we want that ball to be left. Yeah. So that ball there is on the inside of where this ball should roll. So therefore, if I hit that ball, I have blocked it. Correct. So again, you don't have to be too strict. It's just something rather than hole based, more of an intermediate target for you to try and navigate that round more. Even standing here, I feel like I'm going to hit that ball. Okay. Because then I've, I'm obviously so used to aiming left and blocking. So even there, we could say, well, you may then need to fall into the category of just reading a bit more break. Yeah. And then what you find is... You, more. <laughs> you get, well, in between the balls, you could say, but then you feel the speed is then going to die in yeah. more. So again, the nine inches applies to that. Okay. So how does that part of face alignment look there? So it's still far left, isn't it? Far left. But you're just going to guide this around that, t that ball now. Okay. The intermediate one. Boom. Not bad. So again, the fact that you were aiming left, it's not necessarily a bad, like we said, yeah. over readings, actually not a bad thing because yeah. so long as we then can judge the pace, yeah. we have much more of a chance. Yeah, to be honest, like, I would say that I probably tend to over read more than anything because when I'm coaching putting, it's certainly yeah. not something that I do all the time like yourself, but I just drill it into everyone. Overread, 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 because subconsciously, if you know there is a big break and I aim over there, I'm not going to hit it very hard. No. But if I aim straight, a lot of players, the mentality is that aim straight, the harder you hit it, the more straight it's going to stay, but then they neglect to think about the consequences of when you've got a seven footer coming back. Correct. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden there, you may fall into the category of going, well, intermediate targets might be good for you. Yeah. So it, it does pull you away from there, but if you feel like your green reading is there and you miss low side and we know you're aiming left, the face is opening. Mm. So your tendency would be to, well, stick a target there. We're trying to keep it left of the target, so the face has to be then more closed, but more square. Yeah. And then hold more puts. Yeah, get me back on tour. <laughs> yeah.